<laughs> we really got to work the signal out. It's been a few months. Uh, welcome to the studio. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us today, Saturday. Beautiful sunny day in northern Michigan, next to the shores of Lake Michi or Lake Charlevoix. And it's just beautiful out there. It's starting to melt. There's still a lot of snow. And we got kind of a fun day today. We're going to get right into it real quick. Uh, so the one thing I want to say is thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much the ones that have supported us through our buymeacoffee.com david.austin backslash david.austin. You can also get the links on, um, on our Instagram and uh, YouTube or Facebook, I don't know, anyway, the links are all over the place. Kristen does a good job on that <laughs> stuff. And so, But thank you those that have been supporting us so that we can continue to improve the videos. And we've made a little pedestal back there, a command center, that you will we'll probably show you at some Pretty point. Pretty special, I like it. And uh, so, yeah, it looks good. You look like the true um, sidekick now. Yes. Except today, she's not going to be a sidekick. <laughs> she's coming around to the front to get crazy with some paint techniques today. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about briefly when we got started is we're going to cover, uh, what did I say, minimalism versus complex layering techniques and pros and cons. And just real briefly, we're going to talk about that. We'll probably switch down to take a look at the board. And uh, so you, you, I don't think you'll see a lot of us today because when Kristen comes around, she may or may not be able to answer questions. We're not even sure we can see your questions yet <laughs> on, on doing it the way that we're doing it today. But, you know, every week we learn something new. So thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be working today. So you do know we've got some powdered tempera paint. We're going real cheap today on some of the supplies just because I, I'm reinforcing again that, that you can make and you can create with anything available to you. It doesn't matter. Get a kitchen, old kitchen fork, an old knife as a palette knife, you know. You may discover something completely new and different. And remember our motto, our hashtag is create without fear. Because we want you to explore, to learn, to play, to enjoy the process. The process is way more important than the end result. That to me is what's important. You know, eventually if you're going to be a professional artist, quote unquote, um, you have to sell things and so you have to think about the finishing and the in the gallery representation and all that other kind of stuff and we're going to be covering that in a special um, little workshop on our uh, private network which is what is it Kristen you do it www.spark.createinspiration.club that's it so uh, it's by invitation only it's a safe place to learn it's a safe place to ask questions you're not going to have trolls in there uh, we moderate it and so we're still getting that flushed out, all of the details, but it's, it's live now and there's several people in there. So thank you, those of you that are in there too. We need a few more members so we can start to have a critique we'll, corner. So. We'll have critique corners, we'll have display areas for members. And Anyway, we'll get into that another time. I don't want to spend the whole time talking today, do you? No. No? I don't either. Okay, so let's look down here at the surface and I'm sure I'll remember something else that I can poke in. Kristen's going to re readjust for the... Well, you can uh, talk about this first. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right here. These. Some of you, some of you on YouTube and um, Twitch. Twitch. That's really annoying. We're just gonna go ahead and turn that music off today. It won't turn off. I'll turn it off. <laughs> Calm down. We're not gonna eat it anyway today. It's gonna be so noisy with her chit chat and all, all in front of you. <laughs> anyway, so where was I? What what were we talking about is um, minimalism which is over on this side. Some of you that are watching on uh, Twitch and YouTube, and are we Facebook Live today yeah. too? Facebook Live, we'll have the down view. Instagram, you just have the one view from the camera there at this time. We're still working out how to make multiple views with that. So what we have is a minimalist view, uh, approach here, and then we have a more complex layered approach here. And these are mixed medias, and I'm actually working on foam core right now. I'm kind of running out of surfaces. I need to make a big order of supplies because I seem to not be able to stop making stuff. So a lot of times we start with some gestural marks when we're doing abstract. So either we're doing that with the charcoal or we're taking the brushes and we're doing kind of a dance on the piece. We might have a general idea of laying it out, but sometimes the marks are so interesting in themselves that you don't want to actually destroy them and cover them up. So a lot of times I'll end up a piece like this where I started and I was going to go ahead and go into it. 
I enjoy what's happening and happening in this. So I'm going to look at this for a while. I'm going to set it aside, and it may stand the test of time. And I may say, "Hey, that's a done piece." And so there is a collection of minimalist pieces that I have that are kind of laying around, and it's it's basically developing its own collection. But then. So right now, one of the main things that so many people are doing is layering and layering and layering. And so we come over to this piece, and this piece started out, and we'll try and get some pictures at some point of how it started. But it starts with some charcoal lines and then drawing. I drew some mountains in there, and then it evolved from that, each sub subsequent layer that we added up. And that's kind of what we're going to do today is um, some linear type work, some gestures. You're going to see us do a layering type piece as we come up with the layer and scrape through. And the other thing that's interesting when you do that is you can do a, what's called a subtractive method of painting. So you're going to be removing different layers. There's a, a, a tempera paint stick down below there. Um, the One of the ones we have going is has some waxes down in there. You can use wax resist. You can use different kinds of paint. And then as you work the surface canvas or board or whatever you can subtract either with towels wiping it off or scraping it with palette knives or in my case i really like you know you, those of you who have been here before i really like the uh, joint knife um, from you know drywalling those are great so those those will help scrape things down do you have questions already we don't know i don't have any questions at the moment i've got a lot of people joining hi everybody hello everyone so that, that's what we're going to do. And Kristen, we're, she's going to join us and just go a little crazy on this, which is going to be fun. We're going to get a little bit painterly in here together. Let me set these out of the way. And if you have questions, we'll, I don't know if the questions will show up, but I'll tell you what. Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to run it on the other phone. So she's, she's going to run it on the other phone. So the thing is, if, if we can't, if we, for some reason we can't get to all the questions, be sure to post them if you really want to know that on um, that, that is about to fall off the table right there. <laughs> it was one inch over the edge. There we go. That's a little better. I'm trying to get the whole board in. So uh, one of the things is this is record. This is going to be recorded. It's a live session now. It will be recorded. And so if you really want your questions answered and you can't get an answer during the live session, go wait for it to be uploaded to the various platforms and then uh, pose your questions in there and be specific uh, about what you'd like to know. We're happy to answer it and we'll go back through and answer them. Because today's a little different, right? Yeah, it's just a lot. If we had a third operator today in here, we could do that, which we've talked about trying to do <laughs> at a certain point. So you're about ready to come over here and create something If there, you Christine? give me two seconds, I'm just going to see if I can get this up two on my seconds. phone, and then we could see comments. So one of the things I'm going to do, and hopefully you all have, um, not everybody has this big space like us, obviously, and some of you have a lot more space than we do, but one of the nice things is that if you have everything set up, and you can see uh, this week we moved a bunch of things over to this side, and it's all within reach specifically for the filming process for the for the uh, camera work so I can reach all my acrylics in here um, I can reach all the other stuff that I might be using different materials in these um, different stamps are in here and then I've got finishing tools over here extra paint down in there so most of the stuff I need is right here including my handy gloves which I always use when I'm painting if I can help it so I was killing time while Kristen tries to figure out the details. Yeah, I'm struggling here <laughs> to figure out how to get it. So one of the things we're going to do today is we'll do something with some tape. I'm going to just lay out some tape and Kristen's going to be here shortly. Whoa. Okay, is half of each acceptable? So I can get in the screen. Can you do it lengthwise? You no, I can't on IGTV Live. Here, I mean, this, this way, I mean, shoot oh, down the here, board. I can try that. I You're going to need a, another. We made all these changes for this new... Uh, pedestal display. Yeah, that'll work. That will be a little just don't bump it. Yeah. No earthquakes kidding. allowed today. No kidding. Okay. Hey, give me some of that tape. You want the bigger tape than that? I'm just gonna tape this down. I got duct tape. That's not gonna hold too well. But. I just need to get enough. It's more of a visual reminder to me to not run into this because you know I like to run into things. Okay. She so. says she's mildly uh, cl um, klutzy, but I actually don't really believe that. <laughs> so I'm just kind of laying this out, and, and, and I'll explain the tape. A lot of people do tape work, and I have a resistance to it because a lot of people do it. 
but it's a nice way to block out areas and get a designated zone of something or to uh, provide some nice strong clean lines but what I'm going to do is after in a little while I'm going to actually after we do a first layer take some of that tape off so that's what one of the things we're going to do today is a little something different in here I officially cannot see anybody's comments so oh yeah so we'll remind you if you're asking questions we probably we can't seem to see them today we'll work out these details I promise so write your question down on a piece of paper old school and <laughs> mail it to us no <laughs> and we'll get back to you in four to six weeks no just an idea yeah you can do, well I'm just saying when, when we got the recorded one out yeah, yeah, yeah. you can uh, You'll be able to, when you see the recorded version, you'll be able to. All right, so just for context here, I haven't painted since December 23rd, 2018. 28, 28. And, and there was a bigger gap before that. Yeah, and that was with oils. <laughs> and I got disturbed about 11 times when people asked me questions about how to make dinner, and I gave up. So, uh, I have never used a palette knife of this size. And again, my medium really isn't acrylics or tempered, so this will be interesting. I also have never used tape. So one of the things we have today, well, we're going to do some gestural stuff first before we get too deep. You know, we got that other heater on. I'm going to go turn it off. Yeah, that's really annoying. Don't. Stay, stay right there and entertain them, Kristen. Hi. <laughs> I think I just figured out how to do this. Okay. <laughs> that heater doesn't need to be on making noise. There we go. It's, wait, everybody. Let's see what temp. It's 59 degrees in here today. Fahrenheit. Okay, so everybody, I'm on my other Instagram account, Waterpaw, in here. So I can respond to your questions via water paw. Oh, that's really confusing. Right now. I know, <laughs> but I can at least see what we look like. That's so convoluted. <laughs> well, I can at least read off the questions that I see. So here, yeah, and that's good. Uh, so what we have here, this this surface today is foam core, and it's just a basic foam core. And uh, maybe explain what foam core is. Okay, so foam core is poster board basically with foam between, right? Yeah, it's a little bit more more than that. It's a super smooth surface. Not um, absorbent, really. It's not not too absorbent, but it's great for uh, mixed media and for um, for doing uh, markers and also, also anything that's really smooth. And I've enjoyed working with it the, this last couple of days. And I just started working with it the last couple of days because of the fact that. It's so smooth. It's so, so smooth. So any of thing like the paint sticks, uh, you know the paint sticks we were using a lot, right, Gay? So the paint sticks go on just beautifully if you can get them open because, you know, I get acrylic in mine all the time. So watch this. How Look at how beautiful that is. Everybody see that, I hope? Yeah, everybody can see that. Okay, good. Yeah, you want to see what they see? No, not really. There you go. And again, one of the things I really like about these paint sticks, and I will say, I'm going to be doing a video, comparison video, on um, these paint sticks, which are, these were originally from Sargent Art, but you can buy them, the generic versions, from a diff couple different places. And they, um, so, they're really different, as it turns out, from the Faber-Castillo, Gelatos. Gelatos. And we have those over there. In fact, hand me, hand me that um, platform. I'll show it to them. So I'm going to do a video this week. I'll do a, a recorded video. I'm going to compare these Gelatos with the, the cheap paint sticks, okay? The gelatos are a lot more money. You can already see there's a lot less material in the Gelatos than there is in the tempered paint sticks. And they have some really different, different characteristics between the two. I was really surprised because I hadn't used these. These just came in yesterday and I'm only starting to play with them today. So, and I may or may not use them on here because they're really not clear on what they do, can and can't do. Here, let's sit over there. Over there. So, I'm gonna do some nice gestural effects. And if you notice, the interesting thing with the charcoal is that if you're using a paint stick, or even if you're not using a paint stick, if you're doing um, if you're doing any paint or anything, it'll pick up the charcoal and move it around, and that's what they like. It makes a gradient out of it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so this is pretty abstract. I didn't really have any intention in mind when I did started this today. A lot of you say, do you have any idea what you're doing when you start of these? And, and a lot of times I do, 
and a lot of times I don't. So one of my favorite things to demonstrate is the little flower motif of the uh, irises. Well, that's a lot of charcoal in there. Oh my goodness. Whoa, I dropped that big block. So I'm gonna fill in, because we're gonna do some layering. Oh, look, that one's empty, Christian. That doesn't belong in there. Put that in the empty drawer. Check this out. So we got some green. I'm gonna block in. One of the things I wanna do today is in the layering process is scrape down through to these colors. And the, the, the colors are so vibrant and they're almost almost obnoxiously so in some cases. I, I think it has a place for the vibrancy, but you can see when with the charcoal, it kind of gives it an instant patina. And that's really, really fascinating to do. But then in pretty quick order, you can see they get, get, get fairly clean. So I'll check that out. So we got some. You're gonna try doing some paint sticks. Well, you're not here. giving me anything, so I'm just taking things. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not my job to paint for you. You didn't even give me gloves. They're right behind you. Yeah, I know. I found them. <laughs> wow. So that's how it's gonna be, huh? All combative. -ish. Okay, so you've watched enough of these. I'm not gonna hold your hand. Later, I'll hold your hand. I'll even snuggle later if you want. Oh, snuggles. I don't mind that a bit. Well, that is kind of nice how it blends. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I hadn't done this. So, the tools, you see a lot of how-to videos using these things and other instruments of destruction, I mean creation. Same and, thing. <laughs> and it's not, um, it's all, oftentimes kind of limited. So I want you guys, I've, I've said this again and again, I want you to create and explore. Even if you're an advanced artist, you know, a professional, you've been selling work for 20 years or 30 or whatever. You know, I, I'd encourage you to do something completely different too. It's really easy as a pro artist, and I get this, to do what works for you time and again, you know. Um, it's easy to get stuck in... Uh, I had a ceramic artist friend of mine who, um, his name is Patrick Dragon. I used to work for him a year, many, many, many years ago now. But I remember he made a dramatic change in his art, uh, more than a few times in his art career. And I asked him, why do you do that? And he said, because you don't want to be stagnant. you got to keep growing um, and acknowledging that this is an organic process, the creation, creation of things. So, was that a whole lot of words in a big hurry today? I always get so excited when you guys are here, so I tend to talk a lot more than I probably do normally. <laughs> oh, hi, Jeremy Prattis, SJ Hall, Rico. My gloves won't let me use this, so. Yeah, well. That's all it, I can see. And mine works on it. It's not working on yours? I'm using the cheap gloves. Yeah, that's what I have. No. See? Uh huh. No, yeah, it's not I working got the for cheap. me. You know how it is. Her and electronics. Sometimes I think she deliberately blows them up with her aura. <laughs> <laughs> so really fabulous. I want to point this out again. Look at how the red interacted with the charcoal and created a lot of depth and some interesting texture. And that is a really fun thing. You could do an entire painting just doing it in this way and building up the layers like that. But you know how we are around here. So, you know, we just can't leave well enough alone. We have kind of fun stuff, some dry pigment today, and this is a tempera paint, and this is a fluorescent blue. Today, and these are like, you can get these just about anywhere, different brands. This is, um, I don't know where this, Rich, Richson, Richson, Richson Art, Jack Richardson. Richson. Yeah, that's the thing. Kimberly, that. Wisconsin. So we're going to mix up some fluorescent blue. You put it in and you add the amount of water you want, stir it up, and you're good to go. All I have to do is find my water. Here we go. How much water have you been adding to those? How now? are you doing today? <laughs> we're doing good. We're good. <laughs> Hair in my mouth. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask how you manage that. If you need something, just holler from over on my side. I don't know what I need because oh. I haven't done this in forever, which is what I tried to tell you five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so 
But I just keep well, that's why stuff, you just yeah. just observe and then do. So I would say you've seen how I do the draw. So I'm going to start layering some paint onto it, and you know that we put it in pretty, pretty. Um, thin when we're doing the draw techniques with the blade, right? The whole point of you being here is that you, you've been watching, but you haven't really been doing. And I think that's going to be very interesting to, um, to experience for you. I spilled some powder down here, but you know how no, there is no accidents. There's just happy, happy trees, happy trees. <laughs> so this is not mixed well enough, but I'm going to go ahead and lay this on. Oh, look, my hair made it into the artwork again. Already? Yeah. Your hair is in a lot of my pieces, I've noticed. Well, I don't even know how. You're not down escapes. here as much. I don't know. I can't even get it out of there. It's just stuck. You know, with the kids, we, we've seen a lot of different um, uh, kids shows, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, Tangled is one of my favorites because it always reminds me of her hair. <laughs> so I got a new blade because she's using my old blade. Yeah, that's pretty. Look at that. She's gone the green route today. So the interesting thing on the tempera that you're going to notice right away it smells is like powder. it's like, very no, it legitimately smells like baby powder. Baby powder. That's the <laughs> talc. That's the talc in there. The filler. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That was a surprise, yeah. <laughs> like, that that answers your question, though, doesn't it? Does it does answer my question. That we had. Oh, that's fun, that little effect there. I'm going to try not to get Kristen's phone completely. Oh, it's waterproof. Yeah, oh, but, hello from Germany. Hi. But is it artproof? You say it's waterproof, but is it artproof? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a good question. So those of you that are just joining, we have an exciting uh, change today. Kristen has joined me painting. She hasn't painted in years, so be kind. <laughs> it, you know, I'm protective of my wife, so be kind. So she thought we were discussing this last week after the after the show, because this is really this is a show. It's a dog and pony show. <laughs> it's not a dog and pony show, but it is, is, it is definitely what does that, mean? that means trained dogs and ponies. I'm kind of trained. No, you're not. It hasn't done me any good. But. He's not trained, everybody. <laughs> hey! <laughs> no, it's like a public access channel. <laughs> well, there's, there is that. I did one of those in high school. It kind of feel like I'm back there. So normally, uh, I have what I call my cleanup sheet nearby that I can wipe off my blade in between because I don't like to waste color. I mean, but we were discussing that we ask all you guys to do this stuff without having any experience. <laughs> Well, some of, let's see, can you see me here? I don't know where I am. You're showing up. Oh, that's delayed. Oh, that's, that's it's a. It's delayed. That's this a real. This is why I always look at you confused, because you move, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where he is. <laughs> I'm space and time. space times at the same time. That's really disturbing. Yeah. The delayed reaction. But see, he gets to see what I do. I get to see what he does. It's fun. Take wow. your Take your partner to work day. <laughs> So we also have a fluorescent pink, but I'm not really sure I want to add it. She might. That would go good on yours. Anybody have any questions? Welcome, all, Earthman. They're all stunned. Huh. They're stunned to see you in the in the back in the foreground. Quiet group today. Not much happening. We've answered all the questions. There weren't any questions. <laughs> okay, so this is again the tempera paint sticks, and interesting. Look at the 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 tempera paint that I just put on kind of powders out right away and it's pulled off. There's a binder in these sticks that allows the paint to stick better to the um, to the surface of the, whatever surface you're using. And, and I found you can use this on a lot of different surfaces, these temper sticks. I'm almost out of them too. I'm going to have to order another batch. Our, our son, our three-year-old upstairs, he, he was like um, uh, complaining because his the, he, it's pretty out of it. We're almost out up there. Oh. So he was really upset. Yeah, I know. He made his Captain America <laughs> shield the other day, and it, it took up a lot. Yeah, I made a cardboard shield for him. Kind of fun. This is silver, and I haven't used much of these, 
So it should be very interesting. Board or cold press paper. Today, this is foam core board. Yeah, foam core. Because I'm out of a lot of the other stuff. <laughs> when do you think you're more creative? AM or PM or same? Um, you know, that's a really good question because for me, that has changed dramatically. I used to be a night owl, and uh, as I've gotten older, <laughs> Because, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly, I'm not old, but I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I'm 51, 52 almost. Mm -hmm. And my birthday's coming up in April. But right now, mornings probably, because, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't have any of the baggage from the day um, that's interfering with my process, my thought process. If it's earlier in the day, that silver's kind of fun. Then I, then I don't have to deal with the baggage, and I actually do very well then. I bring my coffee down, and it's usually anywhere between 3 and 5 a.m. I try to be down here. Depends on how much sleep I've had the night before because of our toddler. <laughs> He's not a good sleeper. He never has been. No, so that's always dependent on it. But ideally, I would like to go all day long. You know, I would, I would start in the morning a little finishing and then do some some dramatic painting like this and then I would move on to um, uh, detail work like finishing and we've shown you some of that stuff there's other videos about finishing techniques but mornings for me I don't know welcome you, everybody you that few new newcomers you have an opinion on the on that aspect no I don't think so I think you pretty much answered that one okay um, I have... I always like to stress to the world that I am not an abstract painter. <laughs> so big, bold movements. I like the bold movements. It's interesting, though, that you covered the entire entirety of the canvas. So this is a watercolor right here that I'm adding in. And this is just a, a yellow ochre. And so I'm adding this in. And then blending it. You can see we can tone down and create some depth by using the uh, yellow ochre. So thin layers, Kristen, and then build up. But yeah, be dramatic with your movements at this point, um, especially in the early stages, because it's a lot more fun. <laughs> I'm just doing what the products do. I haven't messed with them. Let's see, uh, do you have a color you like the most, David? Uh, it varies, sure. I mean, I right now, um, one of my favorites is the yellow, the um, uh, cadmium deep hue from Windsor Newton. That's one of my favorites. I, I'm trying to not use any more the um, trying to not use any more the cadmium. Uh, the things with the toxins in it. I'm trying desperately to not to not use much of that anymore. Because it's just it's it's so so bad. This is a watercolor, by the way, what I'm using, and this is Payne's gray that I'm putting on to kind of bring some of the areas darker. So because remember, contrast is a big part of a piece, a successful piece. And some of you are going to see it's going to get real dramatic here because I'm going to really get into this and cover this up a lot very shortly. Lindo. I don't know what that means. Sounds Italian to me. I could be wrong. Okay, so now that we've kind of put a layer in, we can actually go through, and hopefully you guys can see this, and I can do some scraffitos, and you can see I can scratch some of the surfaces back out and create a little more texture in there. Now, this is where that complex starts to kick in. The more layers you add in, the more depth and things are happening. And you can simplify it later. You know, you can go back in and white out. That's a really common way a lot of us do, is you white out a section. And remember, we have tape underneath this today too, so it's gonna get really interesting. Since you're mixing so many mediums, how do you protect them when finished? That is a Pretty really question. common question for us. And so my answer is that we use a fixative over the top. And there's a lot of fixatives. You can look them up. And some are more environmentally conscious than others. 
and it's no different than if you have a watercolor or any other kind of water media. Um, the one thing is, I do not mix, uh, I tend to avoid mixing anything that has oils in it with the water media. So I do try to delineate those. My oil paintings are oil paintings, uh, or I should qualify it. If I'm doing oil painting, I'm doing it over, that looks nice, you got some nice stuff going on. Um, I'm doing oil paintings on top of acrylic bases, okay? And then it's easy, you finish them just like you would a normal oil paint. When you're doing this, you can't put the water media over oils, for example. You don't do that. So I wouldn't do oil pastels as a, as a starting point. I would do chalk pastels and chalk and charcoal and things like that as a basis for the painting. And whether you're oil painting or acrylic, that's been a common, common thing for, for 100 million years. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll go in and it's all dry and actually we'll use the fixative on it. So get a nice layer, maybe two fixatives on it. If you're going to do a painted varnish over the top, uh, like from Liquitex is one of my favorites. Golden's kind of my second. Liquitex, I think, goes on a little easier. Uh, then I would make sure to maybe do two or three different layers of fixative just to make sure that it's not going to migrate when you brush because if you brush on the water media too hard you can pick up the color and it goes everywhere. The other easy way if you're going to do a spray varnish is just a, a quick layer or two of the uh, fixative and then go in after that's well dry and use your spray varnish and, and that stuff is not recommended indoors by the way. Any of the spray varnishes. How many Projects do you finish over a week or a month? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Uh, I've never counted. That question came up earlier today, too. And yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, my short answer is, uh, it. you know what, it depends on, and I'm looking for a color. I'm, I'm off camera, I know, but I'm looking for my, my favorite yellow. Here it is. Uh, I can tell you that if I'm working big like the big piece behind me, I'll be lucky if if I just worked on that piece all month, I, I might finish that. But I can't do that. So I have little studies going all the time, every day. So I might finish, if I have a, little, a lot of little studies, I might finish three or four a, a day or something yeah. if I'm doing that. But if I'm not really focusing on, on, um, on the big stuff. If I'm focusing on big stuff, then I might not finish anything in a day. I don't know if that answered it, but... <laughs> And that's the cad. This is acrylic paint now that I'm adding in, because you know I can't leave well enough alone on the temper. I don't have any light yellow on the temper, so that's one of the reasons I'm using this now. So now I'm going to take. I'm doing thin layers today. Love it. Love that color. Someone was asking me the favorite color earlier today. It's definitely the. Um, that yellow. For, well, if I'm doing a lot of the like 22 by 30s, then I guess I'm actually doing, I might be doing one a day, maybe two a day, if I have a good productive day, meaning I don't have interruptions from business and children. <laughs> There we go. That's fun, huh? Put a little bit up here. You can see it gets dirtier and dirtier as I go, and that's why a lot of times I have the other sheet nearby so that I can clean the palette off on another sheet. Today I'm using a rag a lot more than usual. So one of the things, Kristen, you can do too is you can use a smaller palette knife to highlight certain areas. So like right here, I'm bringing my flower back out from behind the yellow. And then I'm just going to dump this down here, this extra paint, and then I'm going to scrape this one out. Look at that. And now this is one of the advantages of that paint stick because the binder that's in the paint stick is allowing it to stay on there and I can scrape back down to it and scrape back down through the layer. That to me is really a cool thing even as it's starting to set up because there's a certain amount of resistance to the next layer on it because of the kind of the waxy nature to it. Although the temper paint sticks, they don't actually add, if they add wax, it's a minuscule amount of yeah. wax. So that's kind of fun there, right? Have you ever used watercolor with glitter? <laughs> it's funny because we almost brought it out today. Yeah, we did. <laughs> 
So yes, the answer is yes. That does occasionally happen. It does. You know, I like to explore and, and, and uh, see what new materials are out there, what techniques I can apply. And to me, that's just the real joy. The joy of painting. Oh, God. <laughs> Another reference. <laughs> I can't stop myself, people. So let's, uh, you know what, I'm going to go back in with paint stick on that one. You want some dirty yellow on yours? Sure, what the heck, I've given up. <laughs> More layer, build it up and then scrape it back down That's what I was in, trying in to places. Do. So oh just God. a nice thin layer, one on top of the other. And I would suggest kind of like you're doing, yeah, nice straight draws and that'll help kind of clean it up. But don't forget you have tape under there too. Yeah, I know. We have a, re a reveal coming up and then we're going to do some more over the top of that we put down some tape. Okay, now I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to get out some... This is a heavy body gesso. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put this on this piece. And remember we were talking about how some people use this to kind of wipe down or, or bring down a section. So now I'm doing that. I'm mixing it up and creating some areas that are a little bit more toned down. Do you think you're influenced creatively by the season? Cold, warm, cloudy, sunshine. Oh, yeah, definitely. I am so geeked right now about the warm weather. I love cross-country skiing. This year wasn't real great for us um, between the social distancing facts and then just the fact that we have a toddler. Yeah, it's kind of impossible. <laughs> it makes it kind of hard to do anything sometimes. But um, I, I definitely am influenced by that. I, I love the different season changes, and we have a lot of them here. I know some of you are in climates that you just don't have as much changes in the seasons as we do. So I'm trying to remember the tapes underneath here when I'm doing this. She got over there. Oh, she's getting some black in there now. Okay, so remember that yellow I put up here, I let it set for a little while, and now I can actually come back in and scrape it clean. And using that palette knife, I can create some more texture. These are just some little simple techniques. So, intuitive painting is one thing I would call what I do, and it's really to do intuitive, you got to let go of some of the consciousness to do it. Wouldn't you think there, Kristen? I think that's kind of the definition, yeah. So, let's put this over here. Remember, Again, remember we got some tape in here. We're going to have fun with that in a minute. So that's a little harder color edge there. I like the softness right there on that spot. Did I answer the question about seasons? Yeah, I yeah, think so. Anybody else have a question? That I can avoid? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. Avoidance of questions? Yes. So, remember this is all, we've got some nice layers in here we can scrape back down through. Create some texture. You can come back in later and uh, fill over the top. Now I'm kind of drawing with the palette knife through it, create some really interesting te textures through it. Almost like branches. I miss the Michigan seasons. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Does the green frog tape work better than the blue tape? You know, I don't know. Uh, I was having that debate with me today myself um, because I'll tell you why the, the green seems to be sticking to my paper a lot when I've used it. Uh, and actually, we have a couple pieces of tape underneath these boards to keep them from sliding all over creation. So um, that's a good question. If anybody knows that answer, I'd be curious to know because my local hardware sells the green. But the bluish one is, I believe, a different. Yeah, the blue is a 3M product, right? And the 
and green is the, the broad page. I don't know. Yes, sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not claiming to know anything. Look at that. I haven't even looked at yours. I've been so focused on mine and, and trying to think about answering questions. I mean, look at yours. That's very interesting. Maybe she needs to paint more. What do you guys think? Should we get her to paint more often in her spare time? I have time for that. <laughs> so much time. I just can't even express to you. I have had so much time and I've been at a quandary. What do I do at this time? <laughs> Should I walk around the room? No, that, you don't have enough time for that. <laughs> it's always a challenge. And she does so much with the social media stuff that it really doesn't leave a lot of room to play much, but um, she gets a lot of her creativity from the videos. That's kind of one of her creative juices zone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that definitely is. Although you're not making enough content for me lately, so... <laughs> I blame it all on her. Our well, schedule? Our schedule and our kids. <laughs> yeah. If I have to blame it somewhere, I'm going to blame it. Whoops. Oh, there. Oh, there's seriously? Something. That's a that's a special mixed media piece of plastic. That was deliberately placed there to help. That dog did not belong there. Well, you want me to do this? No. <laughs> oh, she's already got ownership over the piece. <laughs> oh my goodness. What I am I supposed to do with this? I'm used to having. Oh. Uh, or sticking it to clothing. A fabric part is sticking to your board or canvas helps. Ah. So it's not too sticky. Which one? The blue. If you wet the edge of the frog tape, it's tack lessons. Oh. I'll try that. Um, where did my coffee go? There it is. Oh, coffee. That's a good idea. Yum, 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 yum. What's the company that we've been using for this? Life Boost. Life Boost. We're not Great sponsored coffee. by them, by the way. We're sponsored by nobody. Although somebody is sending us a kit. Yeah, that'd be interesting to play with. Uh, I'll tell you about that. We Somebody reached out and they're sending us a little art kit to uh, play with. So when it comes in, you'll see a video on that. I keep looking at the piece over there on the easel. Look at the the the, the circular piece. It's the hard to flower. keep it in focus. <laughs> right? That yeah. one? It Pre vibrates. I know. I was looking at it. I'm like, oh my god, what's wrong with my eyes? Like I did. I this, did the same and thing. And I came back and I'm like, no, wait, no, yeah. And I, I oh actually had to walk away and go to my computer. I was like, I can't do this right now. <laughs> I can't believe she. So I was going to ask her. I was working on this piece. I've been trying to create depth in in in, in my pieces. You know, more depth and appearance of depth and I did some stuff to this um, little piece and I'll show you guys later and it, it really is, it's amazing I, it's I'm glad to hear that you had the same I wasn't issue. gonna say anything because I was kind of freaked out it what is it freaked me out too I thought my <laughs> I thought I was having a stroke I did too I'm like oh my god my oh. eyes have gone dead I need my glasses <laughs> Now, honest to God, thought I was having a stroke this morning just check it on this screen make sure it's still going yeah, it's still going are we going still well I mean it said that last time and it lied so Okay, I'm going to peel my tape off. I'm, I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I'm ready for this next um, moment in my life. Uh, what tape. is your favorite company to use your work to fabric? Oh, there's a couple. <laughs> a we have a lot of them. She, she has set up a lot of them. So I wasn't happy with any of them completely. So I've decided that whatever that company does really well, I do that thing at that company. Here's the tape reveal. Because you have to take into the not just how it prints, but the you know, does it feel good to wear? Does it fit yeah. properly? Yeah, we've tested all of ours at length. In fact, it, oh, that's why I wear this a lot. This one and the other ones to see how they hold up. Yep. Under abusive situations. We're very abusive to our clothing too. Well, again, we have a toddler. Even before that, let's be honest, we've just never been well, this to our clothes. I'm very, ooh, that was peeling up the paper that time. i got to come from this side. If I leave this on too long, I think it's going to peel, um, it won't come off the paint very well. So that peeled up. This is one of the downsides of working the foam core. I like the smooth surface, but you can see, maybe you can see, peeled up that corner of the paper. So if you're going to do sublimation onto your fabric... Um, and you're gonna so sublimation means that you're gonna that you're gonna have to use a polyester because to sublimate you have to have a polyester plastic uh, kind of material. Um, there's a couple options out there that I really like. Um, I will DM you because I don't really want to be. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll DM so you. we'll we'll message you on that one. 
if you message us, message us so we can remember. Because frankly, I literally use eleven different companies depending on what I'm doing. We we have um, so much, so many messages that it's hard to keep up some days. So, I'm right, I'm blocking the view. All right. Okay. I think I think I might be blocking the entirety of the view there. I'm trying to get this tape on. And if you're talking about literally painting on clothing, I don't think we have an answer for that because it's not what we do. Not yet. Although I picked up a couple T-shirts. Remember the other yeah, day? Yeah, our oldest does that. Our my my oldest son does paint on clothing. But I did pick up. Um, he prefers a gilding. I do like gilding. I do too. That's but you got to pre-wash that so it's pre-shrunk. Oh, do I have to do that? I yes, was going to ask you, you really what I do, do but no fabric softener because then it's resistant to the paint. Oh yeah, okay. I remember you telling me that, or telling him, or something. So I used to paint on fabric. <laughs> so yeah, if our um, our eldest leaves a detritus trail of debris as he moves through the house, and so sometimes he abandons art supplies, and I've claimed. Claims <laughs> them as your own. Sorry, Sorry Esmond, if you're listening. He's probably still asleep. Yeah, but he may watch it. He's been actually watching it. He freaked us out because he's actually watched a few of these. Yeah, it was surprising. He called us. He had the audacity to call us influencers. Ugh. I said no. I deny that reality. So. Just because we have four cameras set up and a podium and a computer and three different programs to learn to do it does not make sense. I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. Not talking about it. Uh. I've read there's powder you can use in cotton for subprinting so you're not confined to poly only. Ooh, that's an interesting thing. That is an interesting thing, um, but when you're doing, we, we do print on demand, and some of the companies that are doing that, yeah, it's still got a polyester blend in it though. So, you know, it's still, a, like this is cotton poly, this is sublimated, but it's pilling and I'm not happy with how it's holding it. I like this one actually. I don't see as much pilling as she does. She's very, she's very particular about the clothing. I lost a piece of tape in here, I think. Oh, it ate some tape? <laughs> yep. there's, there's a, I thought I had another piece down here somewhere, and I, I don't see it now. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny to me. So now that I've exposed those areas, what am I supposed to do with them? Do I just leave them white? Probably not, because it's me. <laughs> well, I'll probably fill them in with something. I just don't know what yet. I could take this, which is kind of fun. I'm going to do this. This is a kind of a fluorescent orange thing. And I'm going to go ahead and paint stick. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill in with this. And again, it's picking up some of that charcoal. And if I blend it right, it'll tend to create some depth in there, which is really exciting. Maybe I can make another piece that vibrates. <laughs> I, I still don't understand exactly why. I haven't thought about it too hard, why that piece over there vibrates on a spectrum. It, it's weird. Well, that goes back to, the, remember I was talking about that camouflage idea I had the other day? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. This is fun. I'm enjoying the sticks in here on this one. So you can see I'm pulling, remember that uh, charcoal that we had here, I'm pulling the charcoal over with the paint stick to create kind of more texture in those pieces. I think that's just fabulous, fabulously fun. This is semi-wet into semi-wet. So you, I like that because it makes it fun to, to uh, blend and work very spontaneously intuitive paint process that I do a lot of. How you doing over there? Have a good weekend too. Oh, someone's out. You gotta get to painting. <laughs> I wish the tape hadn't been there. <laughs> but now what are you gonna do with the, with the tape gone? You have a mission now. Usually, I'd be annoyed and walk away if I'm perfectly honest. So pick a color, put it in there, and try it. Not gonna. Not gonna. I'm doing something else. Okay. Give me this. I want this. Grabby. Good thing we're married, and I love you. 
Mm. A little different upstairs today is, is Nana came to watch. Yeah. We actually have a, a um, we actually have one grandparent left right now. <laughs> Direct, well, we have great, weird Nana. Great, great grandparents, but. Great grandparent. Yeah, great. Great, great grand, they're my, wait. Are they your grandpa and grandma? Okay. Then it's great grandpa. Yeah, great, great grandma. It gets confusing. It's not really that confusing. I just don't think about it very often. I shove things that should be common knowledge out of my brain so I have space for the other stuff. Like uh, how to create that camouflage that's been in my mind for two weeks now. <laughs> proprietary. Um, Let's see, anybody else? Any questions? Anybody got a question? I have to say that I love painting with you guys online because I always come up with something interesting. Every time. And it's all because of you guys. So this is just a spoon. And I'm going to scrape into this piece a little bit. Create a little more texture. Into the 